Whether you prefer to create your website mock-up on Photoshop or Sketch, once it's done and you've got your client's approval, you still have to transfer your design to the actual site. In this Monday Masterclass, we'll be showing you our recommended process for transferring your designs to your WordPress website. Moving from PSD, Sketch, Wix and any other tool to WordPress and Elementor in the smoothest, fastest and most efficient way. Now, you should know there is no magic button to press for converting from one tool to WordPress. However, since Elementor is so user-friendly, we'll show you just how easy it is to perfectly recreate your design in no time. And this is actually the process that our designers use to create Elementor templates. They first design it on Sketch and then recreate it in Elementor. Let's get started. This is the approved draft of a brand new template kit our designers will be publishing very soon, which makes you guys some of the very first people in the world to see this sneak preview. It doesn't matter if you use Sketch, Photoshop, Adobe XD or any other tool. The process is exactly the same and we're going to take this prototype and recreate it in Elementor. Now, when building this prototype, our designers already had Elementor's widgets in mind and we suggest that you do the same because it will save a lot of time. For example, to create this section here, I'll use one section for the hero and add a couple of headings. And to create this section over here, I'll use a section with the shape divider effect to get these angled lines and I'll use some image box widgets to create these elements here. So let's get cracking and create this page using Elementor. Step number one, preparation. As you can see, we've already prepared all the visual assets, the images and icons we'll be using later. We've created a new page and we're editing it in Elementor. In the page settings, I've already named the page and set our page layout to Elementor Canvas. For those of you who prefer to preset your colors and fonts, We'll do this right now by clicking on the menu icon or hamburger and select the color picker. We already know what colors we'll be using, so we'll select each color, dial in or paste in the new color code from our Photoshop or Sketch file and click apply. And the same goes for the fonts. For this particular page, we're using Google Fonts, but you can just as easily upload a custom font into Elementor. Step two. Translate our design into Elementor. Let's kick off by adding our first section. A single column section in the navigator will give it the appropriate name, hero. Now we'll go to the edit panel and in the style tab we'll add our hero image that we've already resized in Photoshop. We want this in the middle so we'll set the position to center, center, set the attachment to fixed and we'll also enable the scrolling effects and go into the scale parameters and have the direction to scale down and the scrolling speed to three. And we also want the viewpoint to be from the bottom. These are things that we've already discussed in the design meetings. In the background overlay settings, we'll recreate the gradient from our sketch file by using the almost black for the first color and the blue or bluish violet with a little transparency for the second color. Now we'll go to the layout tab and set the section width to 1200 pixels, a good size for desktop screens, and set the minimum height to 100% of view height. Into the sections column, we'll drag a heading widget and then duplicate it. We'll hop over to the editor panel for the top heading and we'll paste the text Believe in Yourself from our sketch file, set the HTML tag to H2 and alignment to center. In the style tab, we'll pick our yellow color for the text and then in the typography settings, we'll select the Helvetica font and set it to 30 pixels, set the weight to 300 transform to capitalize and the font style to oblique. For the second heading over here, we'll go to the content tab and paste the text, be the best you can be, set the HTML tag to H2 and the alignment to center. In the style tab, we'll set the text color to white, 
Then in the typography settings, we'll select the Racing Sans 1 font, set it to 110 pixels, set the weight to 400, transform to uppercase, and let's tweak the line height to about there. We also need to add a button, which we'll drag down here. Now we'll paste our text, our classes, align it to center, we'll add an icon from the library, and set it to appear after the text. In the Buttons Style tab, we'll go into the Typography settings and we'll select our Racing Sans 1 font, set it to 18 pixels, set the weight to 400 and capitalize. We'll set the normal view of the button with the text in our violet color and the background in the yellow. And we'll select the opposite colors for the hover effect. Here we'll have to use a bit of gut feeling. It looks like we're going to need some padding and we'll do that in the advanced tab and we'll add about 50 pixels of padding to the top here. As you can see, we need to tidy up the column that's holding the widgets here in our section and we'll do that by selecting the column and in the editor we'll select the vertical alignment to middle and set the widget space to 30 pixels. In the Advanced tab, we'll add about 250 pixels of padding to the left and the right and add 100 pixels to the top. OK, now we'll save this draft before moving on to the next step. Step 3. Corrections for Responsive Views The importance of responsive views and how to adapt your web designs to fit the screens on various devices is something we've spoken about in a previous masterclass. And just as we emphasized then, the most efficient practice is to adapt our designs for responsive views after each section, rather than after a full page. In responsive mode, I'll start with the tablet view and set the section's minimum height to 70 vertical height, or VH. We also want to make sure that the scrolling settings for the section's background are the same. Now we'll go to the column settings and set the width to 100%. And in the advanced setting, we'll set the padding on both sides to 15%. That should look nice. Now we'll scale the size of the top heading to around 20 pixels. And then the size of the second heading to 72 pixels. And since there are no changes for the button, we'll save the draft and move on to the mobile view. Again, we'll start with the section. Here we calculated a minus 90 pixels to the top margin and we'll add padding to the top and bottom of 25%. We'll then go to the column and add 5% of padding all around. Now we'll scale the size of the second heading to 55 pixels. And there's not much left to change with the button in the mobile view except for perhaps getting rid of the additional padding in the advanced tab, which we'll do by setting it all to zero. We'll save our draft and just like that we've translated our entire hero section across our three different views. We haven't used an ounce of code, we haven't had to change anything in our original design and even if we did, we can make those changes on the fly and see the results instantly in front of us. Now having just seen how easy and intuitive this process is, many of you might be getting that itching need to ask why don't we create these prototypes or drafts or mockups directly in Elementor. And the truth is, you can. You can design and create your page, build elements, even print it all to PDF and send drafts to your client. However, the vast majority of designers prefer to concentrate all of their trial and error in a safe zone. So tools like Sketch, Adobe XD and Photoshop are environments that the designers are well acquainted with. They rely on them because of the flexibility that they offer designers when they want to play around with ideas and need to see everything all at once, all of those assets across the entire site. And who can blame them? Elementor was created by designers who not only understand the need for this safe zone, they rely on it themselves. This is precisely why it was designed, to combine the flexibility of the safety zones with the ability to see what the results would look like on various devices in real time. Okay, so moving on, 
we'll add a new section. We'll set it to full width with no gap between the columns with a minimum height of 90 pixels. And we'll set the column position to top. Now, notice that the bottom border of this section is at an angle. We'll create this effect in the Style tab using the Shape Divider feature. We'll select Bottom and we want it to tilt. We already know that we want it to be blue and we know that it should be 50 pixels high and we're going to flip it. We also want it to float over the Hero section. So we'll go to the Advanced tab and drop the top margin by minus 140 pixels and then add 100 pixels of padding to the right side. We'll create the downward button by dragging a button widget and erasing the text. We'll align it to the right and select our icon from the library. In the Style tab, under Typography, we'll enlarge the font size to 25 pixels to make that icon a bit bigger. Next, we'll select the same colors as we did in the previous button and we'll add some padding. Now let's add some box shadow and raise the blur a bit. We also want this button to overlap the next section, so we'll set the bottom margin to minus 15. On to the next section. We'll set it to be 1200 pixels wide, like our hero section. In the Style tab, we'll set the background to a solid blue. The bottom border of this section is at an angle and we'll create it again by going to the Style tab using the Shape Divider feature and we'll select Bottom and set it to Tilt at 30 pixels high. We can create the yellow border by selecting Yellow as the color of the divider and we'll flip it. We'll also add the padding we need in the Advanced section and set it to 50 pixels on the bottom. Now we'll link the downward button we made to this section by quickly setting up an anchor widget. We'll name it Icons and then go to the button and in the editor under Content tab we'll set the link to Icons. And done. Now to build up the icon structure itself we'll drag an inner section widget like we mentioned before and we'll use the same width settings as the section. 1200 pixels and I'll add the 50 pixels of padding to both the top and the bottom. We'll use image boxes here because they include a heading and a description and I'll select my image. I'll paste in the heading and then the description and in the style tab we'll reduce the spacing of the image to zero and the width to 22%. Then we'll set the spacing of the title to 6, the color to white, and in typography we'll set the font to Racing Sans 1, size 24, weight 400, and uppercase. And then we'll set the description color to white and the font to Helvetica and set it to 16 pixels. And we'll set the weight to 200, transform to capitalize, and the font style to oblique. Now this would be a perfect time to review what we've done in responsive mode and make the necessary corrections, exactly like we saw earlier. Now with your permission we'll skip to the next stage so that with everything looking great in responsive view we'll just duplicate the icon and text we just created, change the icons and the text to what they should be. And this is the result in responsive mode. Again Adjusting designs across the various responsive views section by section saves us time and headaches. And what a surprise, we're done with this section too. Now from here on out, the process will only get quicker. We can duplicate sections, save widgets as global widgets, save entire pages as templates, and use them as a foundation for the rest of the pages in our website. All this to save having to recreate elements from scratch and without having to use any code. This week we saw how fast and simple it is to take your designs from Sketch, Photoshop or any other tool that you prefer and recreate them using Elementor for your WordPress website. To date, anyone who has tried using Elementor for this process has continued to work this way and never looked back. 
We hope this masterclass has been helpful and inspiring. As web designers and creators, we're sure that you'll agree we're always happy to hear of ways to get the job done faster and more efficiently. And we'd love to hear any more ideas, tips and tricks that could help other users speed up this process even further. After all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Speaking of which, make sure you never miss a masterclass by clicking on the subscribe button and tap that bell. Looking forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks for watching. Cheers.